Okay, here we go with our video for 7.3, Bonding in Metals. You're going to really like this one because it's really, really short. All right, so we're going to talk about metallic bonds and how they relate to metallic properties. The valence electrons, right, that outer shell of electrons of metal atoms, can be modeled as what's called a sea of mobile electrons. All right, and kind of here's kind of why, right? If you have on the periodic table, right? Right here's the S block, here's the P block. In between, you have this transition elements or the transition metals. And since all of these, the outermost shell just has those two S electrons, okay? Those outer shell S electrons are mobile, okay? And these metallic bonds consist of the attraction of valence electrons, those two S outer shell electrons, for the positively charged kernel. And kernel's kind of in quotes because it's the nucleus and the non-valence electrons. So it's pretty much going to be all the electrons but these two, okay? So even though there's a lot of negatively charged electrons, since there's pretty much always two more protons than the electrons in the kernel, those valence electrons are attracted to that kernel. But they're moving, or very mobile, very easy to move, right? As opposed to ionic crystals, where the electrons stay with the nucleus okay and since these electrons here can really be free flowing and move around well they're said to be free flowing that's why metals are such good conductors of electricity because when an electric current is generated these negatively charged electrons are able to move freely for the flow of electricity where in an ion the electrons always stay with their nucleus and they don't move. All right, like I said, this one was short and sweet. Uh, I'll see you guys in school.